Good to be here tonight, and um, I'm going to preach a message tonight that is very similar to what I preached yesterday in, in uh, Iola, so if anybody watched live stream, um, I apologize, sort of, not really, but <laughs> anybody who uh, hasn't watched it yet, you might not need to watch it after this, uh, this message, so pretty much the same thing, because what I want to talk about are setting goals for 2022. Uh, particularly, you know, personal goals, yes, but particularly what I want for us to do in going into the new year. And I want to take my, my time a little bit in really laying out what it is that we're going to do for next year. A lot of times we get our, our calendars out and uh, we fill it all out and say we're going to do all these kinds of things. We set a lot of big goals, which I'm, I'm all for setting goals. Um, you know, in fact, it's one of my favorite things to get like a, a plain, uh, a, a blank calendar for the new year. Does anybody like that? Some people don't care so much for it. I like a, <laughs> you're not big on it. I like a brand new calendar that, you know, it's just, it's all blank. Everything is brand new. Some people get real stressed out around Christmas time. A lot of things they didn't get done that they wanted to, or things that didn't go as well as they hoped that it would, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things. We're talking about some of those tonight, but uh, so a lot of people, you know, get real stressed out and depressed this uh, that time of year. And for m my thinking, you know, I think I don't really, I'm not a very stressed out person. Like I think, I think I get stressed, like everybody gets stressed. And I think mine comes out. Sometimes I'll get headaches or just won't feel particularly good on a certain day. Maybe that's how my body handles stress, but I don't feel depressed. I'm not one of those guys that gets easily stressed out about things. That's just my makeup. That's the way God's made me. I kind of just roll with the punches <laughs> and that kind of a thing. And maybe that's good for some people. Maybe that stresses some people out. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we've got to, we've got to have some goals that we set. And some people don't like making goals because they don't like, uh, you know, they, they know they're not going to accomplish them. So they're already like defeated before they even go into the new year. They're just like, you know, why I never accomplish any of my goals. I don't get anything done. Nothing's going to change. And they're just stressed out. And they, I, I've heard now, obviously for Christians, I would hope this wouldn't be the case. We're all in the flesh. Anybody could do it. I know, but I would hope among Christians that uh, they don't sorrow like the world sorrows. And so the suicide wouldn't be an issue, but this time of year around the holidays, I've heard is one of the highest uh, times of the year for suicide. And uh, I think that's a lot what it is coming to the end of the year. People realize, you know, another year older and uh, that, so that Christmas song. So, so suppose the Christmas song just went through my head <laughs> another year older. And it's like, what, you know, what, what's 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 changed? Nothing's new. This year flew by so fast. I don't know about you guys. It's hard for me to even remember everything that happened this last year. Uh, it take me some time to go through and just to even remember that. And so my goal, uh, you know, this year I like to set new goals. Um, I'll talk a little bit about goals that people normally make. And I know I'm not exception. I, I like doing that. And I look at it this way. You know, I, I really do. This is maybe what helps me keep going. I don't get disappointed when I don't reach my goals. <laughs> it drives some people crazy and they probably don't like it about me. But here's the thing I always think. Like I set these goals and I don't accomplish them. Now, rule number one in setting goals, don't, don't set goals that you can't accomplish, right? That's what everybody tells you. Don't set goals you can't accomplish because then you're not going to try hard or whatever. I just look at it like if I didn't set those goals, I wouldn't have even tried and I wouldn't have got anything accomplished. It's kind of like the whole idea of setting a hundred mile run. Some people are like, why would I, why would I even try that? You know, I'm never going to do a hundred miles. So why would I even try to train for it? Yeah, but you get 40 or you get 50 and you're just like, hey, I wouldn't have done this if I didn't set a goal and try to do that. You know, that's just the way my mind works. And so therefore, I'm not as bummed out whenever I don't complete it because I'm like, well, at least I did something. And not everybody can, you know, not everybody can go, can uh, be OK with that. Maybe just different personalities or whatever. But here's what I want to uh, point out. When you get to James chapter 4, um, it, we, we won't, we'll, we'll, it'll be a little bit before we get back to this chapter, but when you get to James chapter four, he talks about not boasting yourself of tomorrow. And, uh, some people would look at that and think, Hey, you shouldn't even make goals, you know, because, uh, you, you know, you're putting yourself above God who knows what, you know, what's going to happen. And so, uh, and so what I want to show you this in this message is <clears throat> by next 
Thursday, Wednesday for Iola, Thursday here, I want to have laid out some basic goals, some plans for the new year for, for the church. Okay. And in your life, I encourage you to set goals for yourself personally. Uh, and hopefully they'll, they'll, uh, line up with some of these goals for the church as well. Um, I want people to set goals. I want people to, uh, to improve, you know, every year to just look forward to improving. Maybe one year goes by, you're like, Hey, I took a couple steps back in my Christian life or in my finances or in my health or whatever, you know, your goals are. Uh, but this next year, challenge yourself to go a little bit above and beyond. And I don't believe it's wrong to make goals. In fact, I think the Bible's very clear. There's a lot of examples of people who make goals and, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but let me uh, point out this. When you're making goals, there's basically three areas, you know, that your goals tend to fall. Like one would be a, a goal for your body. You know, mo the most common one is what? Lose weight, right? That's most people, January 1st, I'm going to join a gym. I'm going to eat healthy. And then February comes around and they're already done. But <laughs> they set that goal in January about their their body. They want to change uh, their image. You know, they want to, uh, they work on the body. And of course, we know from uh, 1 Timothy 4.8, you know, bodily, pro bodily, bodily exercise profiteth little. We'll look at that verse here in a little bit. Um, more important that we would work on spiritual things. But the reality is we do live in this body. We, uh, we do live in these bodies, I should say. And we've got to take care of the bodies. Uh, look at Daniel chapter 7. I'm going to show you this interesting verse. Daniel chapter 7. Verse 15, he says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Okay, so he had these visions in his head, and it affected his spirit. I'll try to explain that here in a minute. And he says that it affected my spirit uh, that is in my body. Okay, let me read it again because I, I want to get that right. He says, in the midst of my body, the spirit is in the midst of my body. I read something that said, and I don't know if this is like supposed to be going back to the Hebrew or anything like that. Uh, but by just by reading that, I can see the implication being made. They said it's like uh, a sheath, right? Your sword is in a sheath. Just like the sword is inside a sheath, our spirit, you know, or our soul is inside a sheath, which is our, our body. Okay. And I was thinking about that. I was like, okay, well, so the body is just a shell. You've heard people say that. And if you ever go to a funeral and you know, I'm not big on the whole open casket thing. Um, since I was a little kid, it just kind of always creeped me out. But one thing is for sure. If you ever look at an open casket and you see a dead body, you know, there's no life in there. It's just a shell. It's just like, I, I, I feel weird even calling that my grandma or calling that whoever it is that passed away because it's just a shell. The, 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 the them that was inside of them, the spirit, the personality, the, uh, the soul is gone. Okay. And so, uh, uh, when we try to work on this physical body, we understand that it's just like a sheath, you know, that's protecting the sword. It's just like the sword is, uh, the, the, the spirit is inside this, this sheath, if you will. Now you still got to take care of the sheath. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've ever had a knife, that goes inside a, like a leather sheath, which leather is what? Just a dead, dead body, right? And uh, you still got to condition the leather or else it'll start cracking. You know, even if you have a leather coat, eventually it'll start cracking if you don't condition it, take care of it and all that kind of stuff, get some moisture. And so the same thing with that sheath, you got to take care of it so that it'll continue to protect that w which is inside of it. So anyway, second Peter chapter one, let's look, look over there. Second Peter chapter one. Look at verse 14. Here he calls the body a tabernacle, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Okay, and in uh, verse 13 uh, as well, he talks about it being a tabernacle. So the same idea, a tabernacle is like a tent that you just sleep inside it, 
you know people back then they didn't really spend a whole lot of time indoors like we do nowadays like we, we can just live inside and you kind of get out in the sunlight and it's like oh man and you're you know you're, you haven't been out in the sunlight getting your d vitamins and stuff. <laughs> but back then it was like they lived outside and then when it was time to sleep they would go inside and and, and sleep okay so uh, their tabernacle is kind of like a tent and uh, he says, man, I'm casting this tent off. You know, I mean, I'm going to get a new body, glorified body in heaven. So we understand that although we make goals for our physical body, and we should, we should make, we should take care of our bodies. The most important thing is what's inside, and that is the soul. Now, sometimes when the body talk, I mean, when the Bible talks about the, uh, uh, the soul, and it gets kind of confusing when it says soul and spirit, I think about Hebrews chapter 11 that talks about the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. I, I just don't know what that means. I don't understand except for the soul and the spirit must be, you know, pretty closely related to each other. Sometimes the Bible says soul just talking about the person. Okay, like I said, if, the, if, the, if a body is dead, right, that means the soul is departed from it. It's no longer in that person. Now we think about that as, a, as salvation, right? The inner man goes to be with the Lord. But really, it's just the life that's inside the person. They stop breathing. They stop having having any kind of conscious. You know, they 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 their heart stops pounding and all that kind of stuff. And then there's just no life in them anymore. They would say that the spirit left them or that their soul left them. It's interchangeable sometimes in the Bible. Now, when it talks about the spirit in the terms of you know the spiritual man, the new man uh, that was dead, and now he has life because he's a, he's a new man in Christ. You know that's always spirit. It's, you know, in our relationship with God is a spiritual relationship, but it gets confusing when you're reading in the in the Bible about soul and spirit, and sometimes even mind or heart. It's just like where's this seat of emotions? I mean, where's this? Uh, is it actually in your heart? Is it in your mind? Sometimes Bible even talk about your bowels. That's really weird in our common vernacular today to talk about, you know, the emotion that you have in your bowels, right? We don't think of that. We think about the heart, but really it's not even the heart so much. I mean, I don't know. I'm not very, I don't know science that well, but it's not even really the heart that has all those emotions. If I'm understanding right, it's, it comes from, the, most of that comes from the mind or the brain. And anyway, but the Bible is just making a point about those feelings and that personality side. So some of the goals we make have to do with our well-being emotionally, you know, or, or, or spiritually, not necessarily, you know, our relationship with God, but just our, our emotions, our, our mental well-being. You know, a lot of people don't want the stress, so they make these goals about, um, you know, their, uh, maybe their situation with their finances, because that's a key point of stress in like a marriage relationship or in just day-to-day -day living. So they say, hey, I, I need to, this next year, I need to make some goals that are going to help me, you know, be financially stable enough to not be stressed out about it. Uh, they might say, uh, you know, work on certain relationships. Some people uh, change their place of employment, you know, or they make some changes at work because they're like, I just can't deal with this anymore. And for my well-being and for my family and all, I need to change this. Those are some goals that we make sometimes. And then, of course, that soul or spirit part that we talk about that has to do with, you know, that which is going to be with the Lord, that which is saved. Okay, look at Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And 1 Corinthians 15 is a good place to go on this as well, where it talks about uh, getting a new body, putting this old body to rest, and then uh, our spirit will go to be with the Lord and get a new body. Romans chapter 8, verse 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So our spiritual part, which has to do with our faith in Jesus Christ, that's how we're spiritually born, right? And our faith in Jesus Christ is something that we can only do through Jesus. Remember that? Remember the illustration in the Bible about the tree. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Like we have to be connected to Jesus and want his will and know what he wants us to do to be able to do real spiritual, spiritual things. Now we know that that is the thing that we should focus on most in life. 
and in making, setting any goals or whatever for the new year, we should think about what is God's will? What does he want us to, comp to accomplish? And, uh, and what can we do through Jesus Christ, not of our own selves? And that's key. That's very important that we think about that this new year. So go back to James chapter 4 now. So what about James chapter 4, verse 13 through 17? He says, go to now, ye that say. Now, I've looked at this phrase, and, and everywhere I see this in the Bible, like go to, you know, I think about like uh, uh, in the Tower of Babel, God says, you know, go to, let us go down and see these people or whatever. Go to. It's a, it's a strange word. I, I, maybe it doesn't even equate completely in the English language today, but if I look at that and break it down, it, it, it probably means just go, do it, do it now, right? So go to now. It's like, do it now. It's one way that I look at that. Some look at it and say it's more like come now, right? Because the Bible also uses that phrase. So it's more like just, uh, you, know, uh, you know, almost like listen to me or something like that. So there's two ways to look at this. I think there's kind of two applications of what he's saying. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. So I, I think one way to interpret this is saying, you know, these things that you want to get accomplished, hey, just, just do them now. Like, don't, don't boast to yourself and say, hey, yeah, one of these days I'm going to do this. Just, just do it. It's kind of like here in a couple, in the next chapter, he sa says, uh, um, let your yeas be yea. And your nays, nay, just like Jesus said. And, uh, and he's like, you know, just be a man of your word. Just do what you say you're going to do and go out and get it done now. It's one way to look at it, you know. And so uh, I think instead of making these lofty plans, you know, that, uh, that we never reach, we should focus more on just accomplishing what, uh, what we can. You say, well, that's contradictory to what you said your plans are. I'm just telling you, that's what works for me. <laughs> All right. But the other application, of course, we understand this from this text, is, is simply this. You shouldn't say, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that and just leave God out of the equation. This is the key application, I think. Look at verse uh, 14. I mean, verse 15. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you're rejoicing in your uh, you, now, ye rejoice in your boastings, as such rejoicing is evil. Uh, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And so, there's this other application that says, you know, just understand that when you make a goal or you try to accomplish something, you know, anything could happen. Your plans might change. You don't even, you're not even promised tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to be alive tomorrow. And so, everything that you do and every goal that you set is with this understanding that. That might not happen, but I'm going to just work on going ahead and doing it, not boasting and making these plans and not doing anything. I'm going to go ahead and try to get something done, realizing that in the end of the, of, at the end of the day, my plans might change. You know, I remember when I started the work at, uh, out here in Kansas City. Well, actually, when I became a pastor in Iola, uh, I realized we started this work only about a year later. But I remember saying I had a five-year plan. You know, in five years, I would like to have. So many uh, members joined the church, and I think we reached that goal. And uh, and I want to do this, I want to do that. I had all these different things that I wanted to get accomplished in five years. And some of those we got accomplished, some of them we, we still to this day haven't touched. But then there was another unexpected thing that happened that I had no idea that was going to happen, and that was this work starting. Okay, I never put that down on paper. <laughs> it's just something that the Lord led. And so we did it, even though it wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the goals for the five year. I could have said, you know, I, we'll wait till after the five years because I've already written this down and I don't want to look bad in front of everybody. I want to accomplish the goals that I set out for five years. Look, it's all in God's hands. We have to be flexible. We have to be reliant on His will. That's the key. That's the key to every goal we make in life is saying, you know, I'll, I want to do this. I mean, uh, imagine, you know, I mean, a good example, I think, is the Apostle Paul. He often made goals. Hey, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to go to Rome. He had all these plans. But then if God said, no, you're not, you're going to go here. 
you know, he would change his plans and he would go. With the exception of the time where everybody was saying, don't go to Jerusalem. God gave me a vision. If you go to Jerusalem, you're going to die. <laughs> and he still goes to Jerusalem. But <laughs> I, don't know what his, I don't know what happened there between him and the Lord. But I know that he was a man that, that made plans. And if they didn't come to pass, it was okay because he just went with what the Lord led him to do. They're certainly not saying here in James chapter 4 that we shouldn't make plans, okay? Be leery of people that just don't ever have any plans. Can you imagine if your boss came to you and asked for your plans for the next year and you started to quote the scripture, I don't want to rejoice in my boasting. <laughs> you know, James chapter 4, boss, you know, I'm not going to say uh, what my plans are for the new year because they might change. No, of course, you're still going to make the plans. You know, what he's saying there is just, you know, what you ought to say is Lord willing. And no, that's not a superstitious, every time you say something, you don't have to say Lord willing. That's not the point. The thing is just consciously make this understanding whenever you make a plan saying, Lord willing, I mean, anything could happen. It might not, it might not come to pass, but this is what we're going to shoot for. This is, our, this is our goal. Can you imagine if your wife, uh, or, or imagine if you ask your wife what's for dinner and she says, well, you know, I didn't take anything out of the fridge. I didn't make any plans because, you know, James chapter 4. <laughs> You know, no, it's not about not making plans. We should make plans. It's good to make plans. Uh, it's just we ought to, uh, number one, not make this far out plans and everything that we think is going to happen. And we have to make those things happen no matter what. Like, I'm going after this. You know, I'm going to be a superstar. I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to be wealthy one day. And you start going after, uh, after wealth. Guess what that's called? Covetousness. Okay, and you're just, your heart's just going after these things and you're boasting yourself, one day I'm going to be rich. One day I'm going to be a, uh, uh, an athlete. Or one day, you know, a lot of kids think that, you know, they've got their, their whole life set for them. Well, what you ought to say is, if God's willing, that's what I'm going to do. And so the key to all of this that I'm saying, the main idea is before you make your plans and your goals, I mean, the serious ones, the most important ones, uh, you ought to know the mind of God. Right? Because if God says, hey, here's what I want you to do for the future, well, then by all means, make your plans. You know, God says, I want you to go into the whole world and preach the gospel. You know, now he did set us to start first in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, the other most parts of the world. But he didn't like set out like first you're going to go to, uh, you know, uh, Antioch and then you're going to go over here to Crete and then you're going to go. You know, <laughs> he didn't like set out the route for him necessarily. He just said go into the whole world. And so they began making plans. And uh, when those plans didn't, didn't work out, they just followed the leadership of the Lord. Next thing you know, Philip finds himself uh, running beside a eunuch in the middle of nowhere. You know, next thing you know, uh, 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 Philip is, is, uh, is preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. And, and, you know, they just went with it. It didn't follow what their original plan was. But, um, but they made some, some goals according to God's will. And they were sensitive. Hey, God, give us what we need to accomplish those goals. And so <clears throat> I want to challenge you um, and give you a few points here of stuff that, that we can pr be praying for. And I want to make this challenge, and I did the same thing in Iola. Um, you know, next week, this gives me just seven days, okay, to, to come up with something to put down on paper and say, these are the goals that we're going to try to accomplish, Lord willing. We're going to not knock these things off, you know, off the list and accomplish X, Y, Z for the Lord. But between now and next week, I want to know the mind of God on these things. I don't want to just pull something out of a hat. I don't want to just, uh, you know, just come up with some plans just to put something on paper and fill up a, fill up a year, uh, year's calendar. I mean, there's some things I know that we got to accomplish. You know, I, I, I know that we're going to do some small town soul winning events. I, I've got that already in my mind. I, I know that we're going to continue the soul winning. I know that we're going to, you know, I know this is next year is Iola Baptist Temple's 70th anniversary. And so I know we're going to have a big service sometime around April or, or between April, and June, somewhere around that, because that's an important milestone. And I want to make that a big deal. I want to recognize some of our older folks. But a lot of our those original folks have already passed off the scene. And uh, I want to talk about that. But, so there's vi visions that I have in my head. But at the end of the day, if we're going to get anything accomplished this next year, we want to know what the mind of God is so that we can begin to, uh, you know, to, to, to set those reasonable goals and, and, and knock them off and get them accomplished. 
So here are some things that I feel like we need to pray about specifically. And I'm going to challenge you to pray every day this week, um, between now and next Thursday. Just pray that the Lord would help us have a, a vision. All right. Now, me, obviously, as the pastor, um, you know, pray specifically for me that God would work in my mind and my heart, uh, knowing how to lead everybody. And I'm the one that's going to come up with, you know, the final plans to be made, but then you guys, Lord might be working on your heart in some areas. And maybe you want to come to me and say, look, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to that, but we want the Holy Spirit to be the one moving and working among us so that we can have the right goals and hit the right targets. Okay. So, uh, so number one, again, body, soul, spirit, that kind of an, that kind of a mindset here. Number one, we need to pray for the overall health, physical well-being, you know, all that kind of stuff of our members uh, so that we can accomplish these, these goals, okay? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with setting goals. I think that uh, I personally am, yes, I'm going to set another goal. You know, I remember one year my goal was in this next year I'm going to lose so much weight that next year's goal is to gain weight because I'm too thin, <laughs> Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm going to set some some goals for my physical health this year. But not just me. I think that our whole church needs to be physically healthy. You know, maybe I'll uh, work on that a little bit on, you know, what we bring to eat or what I'm, pre you know, some of the messages that I'm preaching or something, because I want everybody to be healthy. Now, at the end of the day, we need to pray for one another because it doesn't matter how many miles we run per week. It doesn't matter, you know, how many uh, vegetables we eat. I, I saw this uh, meme. Somebody asked this lady, I can't remember what her name is. Uh, she's, she's, she's famous, but I can't remember her name, but she, uh, she's in either her late nineties or maybe she's reached a hundred. I don't remember. And everyone said, what is the secret? And she said, I try to avoid green vegetables at every cost. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, green vegetables are health are healthy, but she her point was like, I don't like green vegetables. And uh, so some people have that mindset, just eat what you want or whatever. And it works for them. They live to be 100 years old and they didn't have the best diet in the world. But the majority of the people, right, they are actually working on, they're not, you know, obese and eating all kind of junk and all that. So I think that we should pray for each other's health. But more importantly, we need to ask God to keep one another healthy. You know, to somebody that's sick, we need to be praying for them. I mean, that's biblical. The Bible says, you know, if anyone's sick, let them go before the elders, right? And let them pray the right, the prayer, righteous prayer. I see the, the prayer of the righteous man availeth much. We need to be praying for one another. And I think that if we would increase our prayer and increase asking God for wisdom and increase, you know, trying to get the mind of, of God, we'd be able to get a lot more done. And if we, the Bible says that sometimes people are sick, you know, sick could mean all kinds of things, but sometimes people are sick or hindered from being able to do what they, they should be able to accomplish because of sin that's in their life. We need to try to get those people out of that. We need to pray for them, ask that God would forgive them of their sins and, and, and try to get them repentant, turn the right way, restored unto the, uh, unto the uh, God's people here and get them laboring with us and get them on, on track. You know, we need to pray for one another. Uh, you know, this year we had a lot of people with car trouble, <laughs> didn't we? People with cars stolen, cars not working, all that stuff. And I remember feeling terrible because I never did anything to help anybody out. You know, it was just kind of like, well, just call me if you need anything. And it's just kind of like when James says, you know, James chapter 2 talks about, like, if you say, go be filled and you don't give them something to eat, like, what <laughs> your faith is really, uh, isn't really uh, accomplishing anything. Right? I think we need to work together to, to help people that are hindered from different ways. And we all get busy and we all get focused on our own lives. But as a whole, our church needs to pray for one another and for the overall health of our members. Again, bodily exercise profiteth little. Uh, it does profit, so don't give up on the exercise. But at the same time, what we mostly need to be concerned about is the spiritual well-being and the spiritual health of each other. We need to pray for an increase of labors. Look at Luke chapter 10, famous verse here. I could quote it, but I want to look at it. Luke chapter 10. Verse 2. Therefore said he unto them, 
The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, not every church out there is small. We have a small church. If you combine this church and uh, the congregation in Iola, it's still a pretty small church by the, in the scope of, uh, of, of churches that exist out there. Now, there are some mega churches out there with lots and lots of people. You know, but there are not all necessarily laborers that are actually going into the harvest field and, and you know, doing the work that God wants them to do. Some people are just, you know, they have different reasons for going to church. Now, we don't necessarily want to just build this church just to have more bodies in here and more people taking up space. Hey, it's great if they come, they visit, they whatever, they get to, you know, we want to pray for them, we want to do all that. But the, our goal isn't just to get a whole bunch of people in here. Sometimes when we say, hey, just pray for laborers, pray for the, you know, just the harvest is white. What we're thinking is bodies that we can just bring in here. Not Maybe not everybody's thinking that, but that's a common way to think, that the job of the church is just to fill it up and just be busted at the seams. No, what we need to do is be making sure that those who are here are healthy spiritually and that they're doing the work and they're, and they're, and they're laboring together and accomplishing something for, for Christ. And we know from the Bible that He can accomplish a whole lot with just a handful of people, right? as opposed to great multitudes of people that are just following him for the fish and the loaves and not getting anything accomplished. And God uh, just, you know, moves on. It's not like, you know, remember that old no child left behind? That's not God's philosophy. God's going to keep on moving. And it's like, hey, follow me. Jesus said, follow me. And, uh, and we've got a work to do. So we need to pray for an increase of laborers. You know, maybe there's some people that have been here attending for a while and they're just not going soul when they're just not getting involved in doing different things. Maybe they're the ones that we need to be praying for. Uh, maybe God's going to send us some people. I'm hoping for like at least five people and uh, that, that come and are discipled and they're growing and learning. Uh, you know, I, I would like to see that this next year. I would love to see five people. You know, I think about like Brother Dean this year, man. He came on board and he got involved. Uh, Brother Tom, uh, you know, uh, even to see Brother Jeff, he's had his ups and downs, but he's just so winning pretty regularly and he's seeking the Lord, memorizing scripture and doing things. Look, I, I, I want those people that are ready to learn and ready to. It's not that we refuse people that come in and don't go soul winning with us, but I'm saying like pray for those people that are going to get on board and help us. I mean, not shaming anybody. I know it's the time of year and different things going on, but like, you know, when we go soul winning on Thursdays and we only have two groups and I'm remembering back where we'd have like, you know, maybe eight groups going out. That was very rare, but you know, a special day or something like that. We have a lot. Hey, that's fine. You know, whatever God gives us, we, we're, we're going to accept that and we're going to be happy with it. But don't you want more? Don't you want to be able to accomplish more? So we need to pray, God, give us what we can handle. You know, it could be that I, as your pastor, can't handle any more than what we have. That's fine. God knows. Let's pray. God, help me to be able to handle it. Help me to be able to, uh, uh, to get some people in here and to disciple them. And, uh, you know, hey, I would love for a person this year, um, you know, don't think too far ahead or don't get, don't get ahead of me here, but I would love to see a person this year, maybe possibly even put on a payroll uh, that can be an assistant, maybe like an intern type situation or something like that, who can actually be accomplishing some things um, that I just can't get done. You know what I mean? And they can be a help to me uh, in different ways. I would love to see that, but I don't know. God's going to have to show me who that is. And God's going to show me, have to show me how we can able to, how we can be able to accomplish that. Uh, but we need laborers and we need an increase so that we can keep getting more done. I feel like in some ways, you know, we have our highs and our lows. That's just how every church is. That's how every, every life is. But I feel like in some ways our amount of effort has gone down. And I know we've had some issues. We've had people that, you know, different sins and people leaving and, and uh, lots of hindrances that way. That's all in God's hands. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that. But we can pray, God, give us laborers. You know, whether it's restoring some of these people, uh, whether it's sending, I mean, you know, most of, I mean, how many people have we, have we had here that just kind of came out of nowhere? You know, they said, where did this person come from? I know in Iola, it's been that way and people driving from different locations. God knows God's dealing in those hearts and, uh, and he can send people that we need to get more work done. Okay. And then, uh, the last thing, 
seems superficial, but next week, hopefully I'll have a list of these kinds of things ready as well. Uh, probably because we own the property in Iola, it'll be more of those types of projects. Uh, but when I get some of these projects done that we've been working on for years and saying, you know, just a little bit, you know, praise the Lord, we've been doing a little by little, uh, but I'd like to get some things done uh, that have been kind of set aside. At this work, I can think of a couple already. A sign that I said we were going to put out here never got up here. Uh, pulpit being built, you know, I just keep putting it off. It just hasn't seemed that important. But, uh, you know, maybe this is the year to get those done. We want to set some goals and we want to be specific even about some of these goals, but we want to do it with the mind of God. We want God to lead us and show us what it is uh, so that we can just press toward the mark and we can just go full force in getting these things done. So just a reminder, one week, I want to challenge you. Hopefully you do pray every day. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be a, a, a ritualistic necessarily time where you prayed every every day at the exact same time but it could be i mean daniel did and uh you know but uh, but whatever the case even e either add this to your regular prayer life or make sure that you do this this next week every day find a time to just pray for the church pray for me pray for a vision for the for the future this year and i think we're going we can get a lot of accomplished and we can hit a lot of goals if we have the mind of God before we even set the goals. I hope that makes sense. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your church. Uh, and I pray, Lord, I thank you for what you've accomplished both here and in Iola over the years. Uh, we certainly have a whole lot we, more that we would like to see accomplished. Uh, and only you uh, know what lies ahead. We don't, uh, we just don't even know what we're, we're capable of necessarily. But with you, we know all things are possible. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help this year that we would be able to get focused and set some goals that would uh, be inspired by, uh, by you. And, uh, and we would just have the mind of God and, and set these goals that we could go after. Being flexible and knowing that you could change paths and you could, uh, uh, you could change our plans at any, any time, Lord. But we, we give you that full uh, obviously authority in our lives. And I pray that you help us be focused 2022 uh, on these things. In Jesus' name I pray.